where we speak to comedians about what constitutes a perfect day. You know that. Do you? I don't know. I'm Amy Gledhill and my idea of a lovely time is Facebook changing its name to put your phone down and go get your vaccination, Barbara, please. It's just boomers left on Facebook now, isn't it? Come and hang out on Bebo with Nana Gledhill. My guest today is stand-up comedian, writer and occasional pole dancer, Sean Doxy. We had such a lovely chat about pretty much everything so let's get right into it shall we here we go here it is let's have a lovely time hello sean (laughs) how are you doing hello amy (laughs) i'm good thanks how are you oh i'm very well thank you Uh, have you moved back to london are you in the uk yeah yeah i sort of I kind of lived down a well in Belgium for nearly a year because of, like, (laughs) Brexit shit. (laughs) But now I'm back, so, yeah. You got out of the well. (laughs) I've surfaced, like a mole, yeah. (laughs) Oh, are you happy to be back? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good today because I've been having this crazy caffeine withdrawal because I was so dependent on coffee for yeah. about a year and a half um but today I've just given up on giving up coffee and I'm a lot happier <laughs> just this car needs the anxiety oil to keep running and I'm fine with that now <laughs> it's good to understand yourself and your body some of us yeah, need yeah, caffeine 100%. to function like a low-level human being and that's fine yeah that's fine Oh, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the podcast premise, I don't know if you've listened, but it's called A Lovely Time and we construct what your ideal day would be. But first of all, woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! come on! But first of all, let's find out a real life lovely time, what you've actually had in your real life. So tell us about a time that, that you've thought, oh, this is nice. So I'm worried that I've completely warped my (laughs) memories of this (laughs) or that I'm just seeing the past through rose tinted glasses because I went to see my friend Zoe do stand up last week and we were at the Aces and Eights in Tuffman Right near where I live. Um, And I was like, oh my God. Come round next time. Hey, (laughs) why why didn't you attend? Oh, oh God. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Called out. Yeah, but like uh, we were at this venue, I was like, oh, Zoe, do you remember, do you remember that? You know, we did a lot of stuff there and I was just really jolly about them. I was like, no, that was really fun. And she was like, no, Shan, every gig we did here was awful. And I was like, really? (laughs) Oh, no. And I think I just have this real skewered memory of having had a really like lovely time. And actually, we were just universally hated. (laughs) But... I think that, so a thing I've really, really missed is properly shambolic, weird gigs. And the last properly lovely time I can remember is before the pandemic, a friend who, so uh, they're a pole dancer. And it was one of those friends where it's like, they've come to see so many of my things. They were doing a show and I was like, thank fuck, I can come and see you do something. So they were doing kind of like a pole cabaret thing for the first time. Like they're not really a performer either. Yeah, yeah. It was so good. So I was like so excited. And um, so the show, (laughs) there were about 12 acts in this like rock and roll cabaret in the, not like the back room of a pub, like the back room behind the back room, behind the the staff room. room. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) pretty much. Yeah, like the kind of, uh, (laughs) is this like a PTA (laughs) meeting room for the school (laughs) next door? And there were yeah like 12 acts and seven audience members and it was a real mix of well it was a it was a real mix (laughs) generally but 
it was people doing like cabaret burlesque stuff but the main thing that was happening is the headliner slash compare just the woman who was on for like 60 percent of the show she was having an argument with the store guy like the ticket guy who i think was her oh boyfriend God. but all of the acts knew each other from the bdsm community <laughs> as well so they were having like a kind of ongoing fight and we were in the middle of it and um i just like oh so so you had all these like quite cabaret burlesque like, quite sexy acts and then also cheeky kita who came on to do her. some really like gentle yeah. surreal stuff she's she's amazing her stuff is so like it's non-sexual yeah. Yeah. at all it's like surrealist and silly but people were responding to it like <laughs> oh yeah and she was like no no it's just a lizard in space it's not a metaphor um and um like I, I, I had a cracking time. I was just, like, all the drama that was happening. And um, it was being hosted by a woman who was a musical act. She was very kind of evanescence wow. type okay. thing. It was, yeah, it was a weird choice of compare. <laughs> but also, I think everyone else who was in the audience who felt kind of slightly ambushed by this whole experience was quite shy Whereas I'm like, I don't know, I'm quite supportive in a room. If I've decided I'm going to a show to have a cracking time, it's like difficult to stop me. So I was just giving like a lot of face, like, yeah, yeah. So it meant that she directed pretty much every oh song directly god. at me. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, and she was on a lot. So I felt like we really connected. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. I bet the doll guy took a dislike to you then because you'd taken her side basically unwittingly yeah pretty much he was also very busy though because <laughs> he was fielding a really strange interaction with the other i think they were fighting over him there was a woman who i think that she kind of had an in with him as well because she got like multiple sets and the theme was I like drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so she was doing kind of tap dancing to some happy hardcore and it all ended. It was like the same strip tease twice. So when she did the strip tease the second time, we were like, well, we know what's coming. She took her top off and it was written on her belly like, <laughs> I like drugs. And we were like, oh yeah, cool. <laughs> you do. And um, But then she did exactly the same routine the second time w with the same reveal and we were like oh yeah oh it's the same yeah, yeah, yeah. we knew that was coming <laughs> still like yeah, drugs she is. <laughs> yeah. yeah oh my god it was amazing i would totally go back <laughs> i'm like where do i get tickets for the next one because that sounds mm -hmm. so good that sounds it's got every yeah. element that you could want in a night out it's funny yeah. it's sexy it's <laughs> tense people are arguing it's really it's stressful. stressful. Yeah. God. You get to also hover in on people having a relationship <laughs> oh drama, which I love. I love to be a fly on a wall for all of this. It's like <laughs> London's version of Love Island. <laughs> <laughs> Love it's Island so live so <laughs> with drugs and tap dancing. <laughs> Who's not buying tickets for that? <laughs> And also no kink shaming. Brilliant. There was none of that. Everything was very kink positive. Brilliant. <laughs> this is the ideal night. <laughs> wow. God, I remember yeah, going to see a um, burlesque dancer who, uh, she was sort of like a friend of a friend, so I was going along to support her. And <laughs> she was doing one of them, you know, the balloon routines where it's like there's balloons yes. everywhere. And it's like, oh yeah, cool, cool, cool. And she comes out and everyone's like, yay, brilliant. And she instantly pops the two boob, the two balloons over her boobs. And oh. that was the first thing she did. And then the rest of the routine is her just like popping the other balloons that aren't covering anything. And you're like, oh, I think you fundamentally misunderstood <laughs> what burlesque is. <laughs> She'd gone, here's my tits. Mm. Right, let's spend five <laughs> minutes going, that's a bit of my back. That's my shoulder blade. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah, mm, great. <laughs> but maybe she's really adapted. Like, you know how you make online content? You have to get people as they're scrolling immediately. So she's not mucking about. Did you find it weird seeing a burlesque thing 
from going to usually like watch or do comedy like do you find the vibe different to yeah, readjust to I, I can't sort of get on board with it and i feel really because i found that burlesque audiences are like slightly more rowdy before the show starts there's a bit more of a party atmosphere but like cuz i'm yeah i'm worried about the performers and if i was going to do comedy there i'd be like oh no 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 so i'm like on edge being like they're going to have an awful time they're going to heckle they're going to heckle <laughs> they've been drinking they're going to heckle yeah. it's like they're kind of meant to and as long as it's supportive it's sort of helpful but i'm just on edge being like oh i wish everyone would stop talking and quiet down please <laughs> these people are trying to get their tits yeah. out can you at least do it let them have silence while they're doing it please <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had a complete culture shock because I emceed a pole dancing showcase over lockdown, which was online. It was so cool. Like, I love doing it. But like, exactly as you were saying, even in a Zoom room, um, the audience were real, like they were just real (laughs) horny and like going for it. It's also like, because burlesque audiences and pole audiences are 90% women a lot of the time, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I had that similar thing of I was kind of like, oh God, am I going to be able to sort of readjust the space so that the performer actually gets, like, we actually get a chance to see what they're doing. But that didn't matter. People just wanted to be super loud. And I realized that I was the weirdo. I was the one kind of like, why why would I try and get anyone to rein it in? People are here to be really, like, demonstrative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh my God, also, can I can tell you one thing about this Paul showcase? It absolutely <laughs> killed me. <laughs> so um, this was, it was so nice. It was for the Irish Pole Dance Academy. They do it every year. Um, it's just like, it's the coolest show as well because people are doing quite like classic yeah. sexy stuff, but then also like stuff that's weird and yeah. experimental. It's like sexy is whatever you want it to be. And it was all pre-recorded videos. And there was one video which... um a dancer called Dominique Stagg had sent in. She's she's amazing. And um, her routine was like very traditional sexy, like, you know, red lingerie, very kind of classic yeah. pole, just yeah. like, oh yeah, cool. This is, this is this. And it was recorded in a studio where there was a little audience sitting around watching, including one like good feminist lefty man in a grey <laughs> jumper who was so uncomfortable for the whole show but I was just watching him have like a moral crisis <laughs> as this whole routine went on because he was obviously just like oh my god if I look at her am I objectifying women but if I don't look at her am I slut shaming am I a swerf like oh what do I do and like as it got more and more sexy I could see him like it was there was a moment where it looked like he was going to try and crawl oh away god. but then was like oh no that would be the worst thing and I was like this poor guy he's <laughs> obviously someone's mate who's come along to be supportive <laughs> and then just been ambushed <laughs> by this pole wow. dancing show. I'd love to have a recording <laughs> of his inner monologue just like what's he thinking yes same like I want to support you but I need to also support women in general am I the problem you're not the problem yeah. do I look do I not look yeah exactly wow wow wow, wow. have I like hashtag me too yeah. myself by being here I don't know <laughs> oh my god wow yeah <laughs> i need to start coming to some of these shows with you they sound absolutely incredible they sound so good they are fun they are like yeah i'm curious about it's quite like nerdy emceeing stuff but um i did a show just before christmas again an online show where i was emceeing and it was comedy acts mm-hmm. and pole acts mm-hmm. side by side and we had some drag in between and to be honest like I don't think I got it right in terms of managing the audience's expectations in between each set because, you know, like it was kind of like, hey, comedy, you're going to laugh. And then when we were bringing on a pole dancer, I was like, how do we make it so people understand like, okay, this is sexy now. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I I sort of know what you mean. I think it is possible. Yeah, it is possible. It's so tricky. I used to work at a circus and every month we'd do like a cabaret night, but that would include like silks and pole and comedians and clowns oh, and like wow. everything. And there'd be kids there. It was like a family cabaret. But um, 
yeah, and the, the switching between the tones of the act, because you'd have, like, literal clowns on, and then you'd have the most beautiful, like, yeah. hoop performer. And it's like, how do you get the audience into the right headspace to, to really appreciate this in, like, a 20-second changeover? <laughs> completely yeah and I think to kind of make sure the audience have a good time and also to do your job as the MC of making sure that every act has the yeah. best possible chance to smash it so you haven't brought on a sexy person with the expectation that they're gonna yeah. be funny or like the other <laughs> yeah. way around so yeah it's weird that sounds amazing though I would attend the shit it out was of really that. cool <laughs> it's um it was in Sheffield it was called Green Top Circus mm. but I think the I think the cabaret has gone now but it was an absolute joy we had themes every month it was brilliant Whoa. it was so we even like themes like Doctor Who and then every sort of act would have to sort of somehow oh it was great I miss it let's let's start wow. uh, let's start that night in London please yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Easy peasy. So it done. So <laughs> on with the podcast. <laughs> um so, <laughs> uh, so we're gonna build your perfect perfect day. And there's no limitations. Woo! You can have uh be anywhere in the world, anytime in history if you want. There's no limitations on money or anything. So um let's let's find out uh what your perfect day would be. So let's start with you wake up. Cool. Whereabouts are you in the world? I am at Eisneflug Metal Festival in Iceland oh, in July. Oh my god. That's my dream. Oh my god. <laughs> Have you been before? Yeah. No, I've been desperate to go to Iceland for about two or three years. Yes. It's expensive yeah. and you need time off, which is not yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> two things that don't have. But um, it's also like, I really, it's the only place that me and Zoe can agree to go on like a fun jaunt together as well. But I want to bring Zoe, I want to bring my friend Misha, I want to bring Emily. I want to have like, yeah. you know, a fun yeah. time. None of us can drive either, which is really bad in Iceland, which is also really embarrassing because we're all like, I don't know, 900 years old. Um, but so I really wanted to go to a metal festival in Iceland. And it turns out there's actually loads of them. The one I was originally thinking of is in May. But oh my God, Amy, they have metal festivals in Iceland all year round. Iceland is indoors oh as God. well. So you don't have to camp, which is, yeah, amazing. Um, yeah, I think that would be the thing. And um, I don't actually really like <laughs> metal music, really. But um, I just kind of... First, I mean, a lot of metal people are sort of just like vegan cat yeah. people as well. They tend to be really nice. And um, I think it's also... I was kind of like, why do I want to go to a metal festival? And I think it's because at a party... What I generally end up doing is I will end up outside the loo, like having a really intense conversation with one person for about three yeah. hours. And I figured a metal festival would be a whole festival of those <laughs> kind of people. So yeah. that would be so rad. And um, yeah, I mean, like, so it would definitely involve I'm waking up in my indoor night, not in a yeah. not in a tent, just <laughs> fuck tents. No, I would wake up somewhere indoors with a tap as well. Oh, Imagine my Lord, a tap. love a tap. <laughs> yeah, wash my face, go to the loo and then just head out to the metal festival. Um, I kind of like especially if it's in a language I don't understand either. I think the sound of metal just washing over me would be quite soothing well, Scandinavian as well. Scandinavian metal, like Scandinavian black metal. I've seen some like Norwegian, yeah, uh, a sort of metal in Norway and stuff like that. <gasps> and it's like, I, yeah, I just think it, it's like a different level. It, and it's like almost yeah. it, weirdly more theatrical, but more authentic at the same time. And I can't quite... Pin up, yeah, but, yeah. Oh my god! And if I was gonna ask, like, did they go all in for the costumes as well, and like the storytelling and yes. the narrative? Like very much everyone mm. wearing black. There was no like because sometimes you go see metal in England, and it'd be like you know someone's wearing a blue t-shirt, and you're like, okay, sure. But this was like black, lots of what, lots of like PVC type stuff. All men have like eyeliner on, black nail varnish, and you're like, hmm, yes. yes please. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It, it sounds like the dream. Oh yeah. But so my, my sneaky plan would be, how would I stand out at a metal festival? I would go in like a rainbow <gasps> thing. Um, partly, yeah. Partly because I don't actually know a lot about metal music. So I'd be kind of like, hey, if you want to talk about Harry Styles, I'm your person. Come as like the, if you want poppy welfare. But also if it was properly like my perfect day, I would be like spotted in the audience and we'd somehow end up having a conversation, maybe in Icelandic, which I don't speak, but I'd try. And it'd be like, oh, so what are you doing here? Wow, you've come from Belgium. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually a pole dancer. And I would get adopted by an Icelandic metal band to become their like pole dancer oh going on tour God. with them. Yeah, yeah. And because there's so many metal festivals in Iceland, I would never run out of work. I really, I've genuinely, I'm not saying this out of false modesty. I've got three pole moves, <laughs> so I'd have to like space them out quite cleverly. But I think that could be kind of part of the shtick as well. And then I don't know, like, I don't know what I was thinking about this. Like, it could go either way. Yeah, your, your one's like the sort of eyeliner men i might meet one of them who's secretly like a mountain <gasps> king and become his bride and yeah just sort of end up moving into like under a hill in iceland where there's no air pollution i don't have to worry about trains like there's coffee but anyway um that that's how i can see it all this working is incredible. out really well. <laughs> you've not just thought about your perfect day you've worked out how your perfect day engineers and constructs the rest of your perfect life and i respect that pretty much that's brilliant yeah oh my god that's so good i love iceland it's a place that i've always wanted to visit mm. and weirdly there's a festival on called airwaves which is more like bjork type Ooh. stuff and that's always on every year around my birthday because it's always the first weekend in november and every year <gasps> i've gone i want to go there and then it just never it's just never panned out but i've been trying to go for like 10 years oh, no. yeah Maybe maybe next year is our year, Amy. Oh my like, god! I, there has to be a way. There has to be a way of getting paid to go to these festivals mm. as well. That's the thing, right? Because like Iceland's expensive yeah. and blah blah blah. But maybe they. I don't know. Maybe maybe what they're really missing is an alternative comedy tent. <laughs> I don't well, know. <laughs> you're being very kind, but you have as well as comedy. You have the skills of being an exceptional pole dancer. They're gonna want that. That that you know transcends That's... language whereas if i come doing my weird comedy in english they're going to be like who is this get her away from us immediately <laughs> let's bring that beautiful we, pole dancer maybe... back on stage please <laughs> where's that rainbow girl gone please <laughs> <laughs> could we maybe have like a backstory that we're actually an ancient icelandic myth and we have to come as a pair or it doesn't work. yes um <laughs> Yeah, like the story of um, the woman and her friend and one of them got stuck up a stick and the whole thing is that her friend has to help her down. And that's the story which we could mime, I think, pretty effectively. Like, it's not very complicated. We wouldn't have to learn. We could learn some Icelandic just to not be, you know, yeah. like basic entitled <laughs> yeah. British people. But, you know, um, I don't know. I think it's a good vibe. You're very kind to say exceptional pole dancer. I, I am a I am a passable pole dancer. I just do it with I do it with a lot of face. <laughs> well, it looks incredible. So you do, you don't oh, need thanks, to tell mate. people that you've got three moves because unless you're really into pole, I don't think anyone would know. So you just you just keep Yay. that under your little rainbow hat in the future. You don't need to tell anyone that. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so okay, we're going to be in okay. Iceland. Oh, okay, I will. <laughs> we're going to be dressed mm. in rainbow. Um, what are you eating? What are you drinking? So I felt like if I'm in Iceland, I should probably eat shark, but I don't want to eat shark. What I want to eat is a five cheese pizza. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's there's no particular reason for that. It's just what I like. There is a um, there is a pizza place just down the road from me. also like I'm actually lactose intolerant like dairy's bad for me um but I got a yeah so when I wanted to get a pizza and I wanted to order it from this place nearby I was like can I get a four cheese pizza and they were like oh we do five cheese and I was like five that's crap <laughs> and then I ate it and I was like why stop <gasps> at five this is transcendent oh. it is oh it was I mean I think that I don't know what it is but like dairy sends me into a kind of like gentle <laughs> low-level coma it's very soothing <laughs> so um I don't know like I think 
just something that I could pile more cheese onto and then feel awful because I'm like every fucking week I try to give up dairy and every fucking week I get another pizza this and is just this give never in goes just well. give in to cheese and yeah. coffee that's all you eat now I'm on the cheese and coffee diet that's I do fine. and I will <laughs> the big C and C it's the CC diet uh what are you <laughs> what are you drinking what are you drinking Apart from all Apart the coffee. From all the coffee. I... <laughs> sure, sure. Um, what am I drinking? Um, I've been trying to find like non-alcoholic things that don't taste like yes, sadness. Yes, yes. Please <laughs> tell me if you do find yeah. them. And um, okay, so uh, my favorite Belgian beer, which is a Lef Blonde, yeah. has a non-alcoholic <gasps> version. And my friend, yeah, 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 it's really, really good. And my friend taste tested these my friend who does drink alcohol and she says like yeah shan these are exactly <gasps> the same so left blonde a left blonde with zero percent alcohol that's what i bring with me oh my god i'm gonna try that because um so me and my partner gave up drinking uh the first of january um so we've done what month we've we? done 10 months not drinking I oh know. wow Whew. why but why out of choice like why these 10 months madness why? right absolute madness <laughs> well because we hit it so hard when lockdown happened it was like because we couldn't go out or go on dates we were just like let's just get a bottle of vodka every night and just pr- mm. like he's got disco lights in his living room so we'd have like our own little club night <laughs> oh, but it was so too cool. much yeah <laughs> so we were like let's just stop (laughs) just stop for like a year or whatever we were just like let's just stop because this is we've gone mad we've gone absolutely bonkers um yeah me and my me and my friend emily so like um she's my friend from home we used to live together in london and then she moved back to brussels yeah yeah and then three months later i was like guess who's back (laughs) but belgium for covid was really strict on housing bubbles things so yeah yeah so like emily was the only person (gasps) I could hang out with and crucially (laughs) she had to hang out with me but we did a thing I wanted to make this an every night Uh thing but because there was just like yeah I mean like exact that bleak time where like there was just no way of differentiating (laughs) days or day and night uh, I tried yeah it was just like a blur um I tried to do a thing of like M can we recreate like a trashy gay bar in my house? Why don't we just do that? Because I had some disco lights as well. And it kind of worked. Like I put the disco lights on. We, um, I mean, we did the kind of gay bar thing of I put on my most problematic music yeah. and we danced, but then disagreed <laughs> with the lyrics. That was the real fun. And um, oh yeah, we had the fun moment where um so i kind of got my mum to have drinks in the kitchen but then got my dad to keep getting in the way while em was trying to get a drink from the kitchen so we could like (laughs) recreate the london bar experience of always being interrupted by a man it was fun i mean i would love to tell you that it was like yeah yeah this was our pandemic thing we did it every friday night we did it once and then we were like yeah this is a lot of effort actually we'll just eat pizza and watch a film let's just add more cheese to some pizza please yeah <laughs> 10 cheese pizza yeah. <laughs> oh my yeah. god okay <laughs> that does sound really good that does sound like really fun would so at this metal festival what would you do to differentiate mm. the day and the night is there like anything that would change or would it just Ooh. be one long party that's a really good question i guess also so it wouldn't be at a time where because in the, the real north, right? Like, yeah, there's yeah. periods of winter where there just is no daytime. But I don't yeah. think that's July. I think July is kind of seasonal. Mm. Um, I mean, like, the tragic thing is it would probably just be a differentiation between when is coffee intake <laughs> and when is cheese intake. Because that is daytime and nighttime. <laughs> um, what would I do? I guess, like, I mean, I do, like wearing electricals so i guess when i go into nighttime mode i could be like a christmas tree (laughs) and just have like something like a ring of fairy lights or something which would look cool on the pole as well and also it would be like if you feel like you might be a bit out of place just commit to that and it'd be kind of (laughs) like the icelanders going oh it's 
It's the Christmas tree woman from Belgium who, for some reason, is obsessed with being friends with us, even though she doesn't understand anything that's going on. That's how I would do it. With and her friend. And a real sense of entitlement. Her. Yeah. Like, I have to stay yeah. with her. Sorry about that. I know you don't want me yeah. here, but <laughs> I'm with the Christmas tree. Yeah. I think... July. So, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I think if I could make it excruciating for the people I care most about in the world as well, that would be ideal. Perfect day. Perfect day. Um, perfect day. Perfect day. Um, what would uh, what would spoil it? One what one tiny element would spoil your perfect day? So we definitely need to make sure that doesn't happen. A man explaining the ethics of non-monogamy, <laughs> which happens to me a lot. Does it? Yeah, I don't know why. It's like, I mean, I guess it's because a lot of my friends are in like queer, poly, you know, like kind of gr- 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 groovy, groovy kind of London modern. stuff. So um, yeah, and like, I'm really not. I'm like, yeah, politically, woohoo, relationship anarchy, so on board. Emotionally, I'm like, no, I'm basically a Armenian <laughs> granny, just no. Um, but um, there's always like... I just always end up in an Uber or again, like outside a toilet talking for three hours. And it's just a man explaining to me why non-monogamy is more ethical. And I'm always like, oh, wow, cool. You sound so rad. You can be emotionally unavailable to multiple attractive women at once. Wow. What a cool dude. And what is your number? But this sounds I great. Don't know. Yeah, I know. Are you free now? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I don't know. I think it's like... I don't know what it is, but it, it just seems to, like, invite that kind of slightly patronising oh, energy of, like, yeah. Um, but there's, and there's always one. It, it just, like, what I actually don't hate it as much as is um, men often then, so you've got the sort of ethics of non-monogamy men, <laughs> who are usually, like, you know, doing coke as well. I'm like, what the fuck? Um, but then... There, there is another kind of guy. I don't like dislike these people as much, and some of them are my friends. Where um, there's just someone who will monologue at me about how taking acid has improved oh, everything Jesus in their Christ. life, and I'm like, I <laughs> know. Oh, and it's like, <laughs> the thing is, I kind of feel like, well, I mean, it has been proven to manage depression and addictions and stuff. I'm kind of like, this could be a thing, but it's never with the tone of like. Hey, by the way, here's here's like a cool life improving thing. It's kind of like you must understand by the end of this monologue that me doing acid makes you better, makes me better than you. And it's just like, oh, and it's like, I'm okay. It's like, oh got- yeah, it's improved many aspects of your life, but not your ability to socialize or read human interaction. It's made that very very poor. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> exactly exactly well i'm just like chewing on my pizza in silence like cool (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) let's have a recap so you you're in iceland you're at a festival what was the festival called again instaflug instaflug oh Oh, no that sounds like an instagram disease i'm probably saying it wrong Have you heard about Sean? Yeah, bad case of the Insta flu. Um. What happens? You end up in Iceland in a rainbow unitard. There's no cure. There's no cure. <laughs> well, that does sound good. I wouldn't mind catching yeah, that. Yeah. Um, we're going to be eating five cheese pizzas, minimum. Yeah, minimum yeah. five cheese. I'd say got... get it up into the double numbers Ooh. quickly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow wow mm, a cacophony mm. of cheese what yeah is, what's the plural of of che- like what do you call like a gaggle of cheeses an orgasm an orgasm of cheese yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes absolutely um so you're gonna be with your friends you're gonna be drinking some non-alcoholic blonde leff beer Ooh, yeah yeah Dresses. Getting gently pepped <laughs> getting pepped 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 on cheese and coffee and yeah. gas from the beer <laughs> yeah <laughs> this christmas tree is gonna explode <laughs> this lactose intolerant christmas tree that can't speak the language is gonna show you all a good time happy to represent the uk <laughs> no no let, let's let's lean on your belgian heritage oh, yeah. for that bit all right <laughs> <laughs> and then you're going to meet a partner of your dreams mm-hmm. who's how did you describe him? Like a, uh, an Icelandic king? Was it a mountain yeah. king? Yeah. 
Ideally, Icelandic mountain king. I would settle for hill, maybe cliff. You've got to manage your expectations <laughs> in this economy. But not someone called cliff, because I think you're no. setting your bar too low there. Yeah, You've got okay. to have some kind of like hard boundary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Never a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> Never a cliff. No. Um, and then you're gonna you're gonna be. So I guess your options are sort of like being the mountain queen, or mm. like you say, being a sort of touring pole dancer for a very cool metal band. Either way, yep. you're gonna be winning the game of capitalism. You don't need to. Yeah, worry just about going. That. Just going around Iceland. Yeah, exactly. Capitalism yeah. isn't getting any of my... Well, <laughs> capitalism isn't getting anything of what I say and recording it on my phone. Because I, I, can't, I can't communicate. I don't speak Icelandic. Me and my partner have to communicate in like crudely drawn stick people on runes <laughs> to get anything done. It actually... Our relationship works a lot better when I'm just touring and we don't have to like kind of... Oh, find ways to like manage the practicalities of our cliff business. <laughs> it sounds ideal. Thank you. Well, I hope I hope that you'd visit and we can make the kind of airwaves festival like that would double be act happen. So good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um. I would. Tr- I've all when I was at the circus, I did try pearl. Ooh. And it was so I it was so difficult because I'm heavy and my arms are have no strength. My legs were good. I can I can grip with my thighs, but with mm. my with my arms I was pathetic. Amy, I'm saying this in all seriousness. Come take a pole class at my flat. Literally, I will show <gasps> you what works because I also have feeble little T-Rex arms. Like they don't do anything. <laughs> I've had to work so hard. But the fun thing about Paul, and yeah, I'm sorry, this is like a whole, I'm, I'm going to cap this because otherwise I could just spaff on forever. <laughs> like there is no right or wrong kind of pole dancing because everyone finds what works for their body and their vibe. So like if you never go upside down, if you just do kind of like holding on, serving face, just serving like attitude and like work some spins and stuff, that's like A plus pole dancing. Um, and also, you know, that's... I mean, I think that the majority of strippers I know who dance on the pole for a job can maybe do like one spin and the rest is like (laughs) sauntering with attitude around the stick. And that's pole. (laughs) I've got attitude. Yeah. Loads of it. (laughs) Oh, I'd genuinely love to do that. I was looking at classes in my area and there was was one that was like a beginner's one. And I was like, okay. But then they put a video on their Instagram of the beginner's pole and everyone had the exact same body shape. And yeah. the, it didn't look like beginners to me. So I was like, no, I'm scared. I'm scared. Yeah. I'm frightened. I know. It's really like weird to communicate that. And like, obviously, I live in my just like queer lefty bubble <laughs> where it's like, you know, everything is broadcast on like every single body type, every single fitness level, including no fitness. <laughs> like that is, you know, um, and um. Yeah, I think it's like there is still, like I said, this is a whole other thing, (laughs) that pole studios are still really struggling to not communicate that like thin white woman who's like a ballet dancer, basically. But that's not pole. Pole pole world is like, pole world is horny for everything. And that's what (laughs) makes it amazing. Bring me into the pole world, please. Come, come, come. I'm Honestly, coming. it's like changed my life. So yes, come, 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 come. And oh, I've just fun. checked my phone and the top email is pole dance classes in my area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Specifically for people with my exact measurements. Wow. <laughs> Terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, this is great. I look forward to that. Um, so we've sort of wrapped up what your perfect day is and I think it's wonderful. And I think it's... Yay! I think it's brilliant. I think you've... Yeah. A, A plus, 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 plus. Have that. Hooray! Take that. Want to have Very a lovely good. time. <laughs> what? Well, you know how to have a lovely time. Some guests, honestly, do not know how to have a lovely time. <laughs> Christopher Cantrill, if you're listening, <laughs> we realise he has no idea how to relax or how he'd even attempt to relax. 
um, or have fun. But oh my God. Yes. I need to yeah. tell you something creepy. Well, actually, there's two creepy things. So I have on my phone a list of comedians I suspect would be really, really good at pole dancing. You are going to be added to this list. <gasps> but top, top of my list is Cantrell. I'm like, no that guy. Yeah. Oh my needs God. Needs to... We need to get him on the hot rod. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not quite as creepy. I've stopped doing this now. Um, I used to have a spreadsheet of all the different comedian star signs because I used to run a night called Astrology. This was very short-lived, uh, right. a disaster. Yeah, and the only thing that the comedians had in common was their star sign. That was the booking policy. Um, a lot of Scorpios, Amy. A lot of Scorpios in comedy. I'm not oh saying anything. Oh my God. Of course there is. Teeming with them. Absolutely teeming with Riddled. them. Riddled. <laughs> Riddled with these selfish, narcissistic <laughs> schemers. Vengeful. Vengeful. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. I, I vibe best with Aquarians and Scorpios and other like grumpy Capricorns. Do you? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. but like I have honestly I'm starting to creep myself out a little bit because if I go to like a gig or something I will look at the bill and be like I know all of your star signs and I feel (laughs) sick with myself I feel real shame (laughs) wow oh my god no I love that I love that it would be fun. I was thinking of starting that up again, but I just haven't got the energy to run a gig. No. I'm just like, no. <laughs> no, you've yeah. got Iceland to do and the mountain exactly. king and everything. I've got so much cheese to get through. <laughs> but one it's day. really bad for me. <laughs> I'm always in a, in a bit of a coma because I'm eating so much cheese on the hour, feel, every hour. Yeah, I feel really <laughs> relaxed, but really unwell. <laughs> Perfect, perfect, perfect scenario for starting up a new London gig. Yeah, so do do come along and see that when we get that up and up and running. <laughs> right, we'll I have, have got... to have two nights for the Scorpios as well. Sorry, I just oh, yeah. derailed you. No, no, yeah. absolutely. Well, I mean, you could just do a Scorpio only <laughs> all year, <laughs> all year, because they're so needy. <laughs> we'll we'll need it. We'll need it just for us. Maybe we can combine that with the ice and ice because Bjork is actually a triple Scorpio. I actually I'm so ashamed of how much I know about this. I had listen. It was a really long <laughs> lockdown. I've read so many really mediocre Instagram memes oh about my astrology. God. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, but like Bjork is queen of Scorpios. Oh wow! Well, how do you become more than one? Like I so. wanna be I wanna be a triple summit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be a triple something. <laughs> Please let me be a triple something. Uh I think it is her in her birth chart there's like the moon sign and the rising sign. So what her emotions are as well as what she's perceived at is like <gasps> Scorpio, Scorpio, Scorpio. Oh you keep my digging, God. there's just more Scorpio. Scorpio, Scorpio, <laughs> Scorpio, Scorpio, Scorpio. <laughs> wow, I bet she's really hard to live with. <laughs> <laughs> that's why she lives by herself on a fjord in iceland no one else can come. yeah <laughs> real scorpio vibes <laughs> mm. <laughs> that is the end of the podcast thank you so Yay. much for doing that sean that was oh wonderful. thank you so much this has been loads of fun well, thank you for having me oh you're very welcome tell us about your podcast what you've got Oh yeah, so um, I do a podcast called Pull the Other One, where I talk to pole dancers about pole dancing, just to manage expectations. It is not a comedy podcast, <laughs> just to make that totally clear. <laughs> um, but it is like, you know, the thing that's cool about pole is often the chat has like a tenuous connection to pole dancing, and then I just talk to a guest about stuff they know about that's yeah. interesting. So yeah, check that out. Um, I'm having an amazing time making it. Um, and then also for me generally, uh, the best thing to do for my just nonsense and shows and stuff is to go on my website and sign up to my mailing list. And there I talk about the podcast, gigs, random updates about fucking amount of cheese I can fit on a pizza, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> that, and what's your website? Give us your website address. It's shandoxy.com, all one word. And the mailing list is in big, bold letters that say <laughs> mailing list. <laughs> Click that. <laughs> Here, it's here. Click here yeah. now, please. Come on. <laughs> Great. Oh, well, what an absolute treat. Thank you so Yay. much for talking oh. to me. I've had a lovely time. 
Well, that was a lovely time, wasn't it? Bloody hell, such a nice chat with Sean about heading to Iceland for a festival with a big old king. Um, whilst we were recording the episode, I actually got an email from Iceland Airwaves Festival and I thought it was some kind of sign that we should all go and I was really excited and I was like, Sean, look at this. But she explained, it's not a sign, it's just my phone is listening to everything I say and do and the world is a terrible, terrible place. Still, even with that absolute hellscape, we had a lovely time and I hope you did too. Please do subscribe and rate the podcast. It genuinely helps. I don't know why it helps so much, but it really, really does. So just go on, give us a little review and some stars and it makes us feel dead good to read nice things that you say about the podcast. Oh, it's lovely. Please do it if you've got time. And also check out a lovelytime.co.uk for info on our live shows, everything we've got coming up in Manchester. Our next A Lovely Time has got um, people of the podcast. We have got Nick Helm, uh, Sean Morley and William Stone, who we've not had on yet, but I'm sure we bloody well will. So thanks again for listening and see you next week for another lovely time. This podcast is made by A Lovely Time Productions and hosted by Amy Gledhill with music by Jack Evans. Like I would lick him if he's covered in custard. I wouldn't be able to not do it.